undefeated champion Joe Calzaghe truly was the pride of Wales. He held on to his super middleweight title for 10 years before moving up to light heavyweight. And along the way, he participated in some of the most exciting matches ever against many of his era's greatest fighters. Kalzagi was a special kind of boxer, and more specifically, he was a very special type of southpaw. Much of his unique style could be attributed to his head trainer and father, Enzo Kalzagi, who made his living as a jazz musician before falling in love with boxing. Kalzagi Sr. saw the fight itself as a living song, with every exchange containing the potential for different rhythms, dynamics, variations, and of course, emotional content. Every song starts off with a verse, which is jab, jab. After the verse, you've got to be late. Bring it forward, bring it forward. You've got the chorus. One, two, three, four, five, five, one, bam, bam. Not count five. And so he instilled the very principles of music into his son's style. To fight at the elite level, one must be well rounded, and Kalzagi did begin his boxing career with a more traditional coach. But once he had mastered the basics, it was his father that would teach Kalzagi the higher concepts that few martial artists ever master, and allowed him to express himself in ways that very much contradicted traditional wisdom. And we'll cover these in detail. But first, it's best to explain exactly what kind of boxer Kalzagi really was. Kalzagi's biggest gift was his engine. The sloping hills of Wales instilled in him the cardio and discipline he needed to dominate at the highest levels. He understood that volume can overwhelm. So, he engulfed opponents in a swarm of stinging punches. Kalzagi would throw upwards of 1,000 punches a fight, a number which is considered high even at the lower weight classes. Initially a knockout artist, the hand problems he dealt with later in his career turned into a happy accident as he transitioned from a decent puncher to an outstanding volume puncher. When most informed fans think of Southpaws, they imagine a fighter with a good cross who likes to move to the outside. And this makes perfect sense, as the opposite foot position will leave both fighters more open to rear side attacks and make it harder to land lead side attacks. Despite this, Kalzagi was a virtuoso with his lead hand, using a nuanced jab to control his opponent's rhythm, set a fast-paced tempo, and of course, set up harder punches. It wasn't so much that Kalzagi's jab came from all different angles. It was that it came from all different angles with a wildly unpredictable rhythm. Inspired by his father's teachings, Kalzagi was a total master at changing up his timing. All boxers have certain rhythmic patterns that other boxers can pick up on throughout the fight. This is known as getting someone's timing down, but Kalzagi's jab was as hard to predict as a queen song. Funnily enough, Kalzagi's nuanced southpaw jab was maybe the most usual component of his style. His power punches were structured in a way that I've never seen a single coach teach or recommend. To the average eye, Kalzagi's power punches might have seemed like slapping. But take a closer look, and there was a method to his madness. Kalzagi's roundhouse punches, similar in some ways to Ali's, allowed him to utilize long, fluid combinations that were rare to see going north of lightweight.
In any fight, it's impossible to block every punch. Something will get through, whether it's a straight punch, or a punch around the guard, or to the body. Kalzagi wouldn't just count on volume punching though. He would mix up his combinations in a way to where he could incentivize his competitors to move their arms out of the way for him. For instance, he might throw straight shots to tighten his opponent's guard, then circumvent it by throwing a round. But there was a lot more to it than that. So, here to explain further is the excellent breakdown channel, Surgical Boxing. Hi everyone, Surgical Boxing here. So, Kazaki's opponents knew these punches were coming and had dealt with similar setups a million times before. So why were Kazaki's so hard to stop? It has to do with how rhythm and power can work off each other. Not every punch was thrown at the same speed nor power. If you constantly throw fastballs, eventually the batter will get the timing down. Kazagi disrupted the timing through varying his speed and power. After all, a good musician will vary up the timing and volume between notes to get the exact phrase they're looking for. Maybe that's too many metaphors, so here's the example. Sometimes an initial jab cross will be thrown fast to set up a power hook. In other words, he lulled them into a false sense of security, then took advantage. Other times, a hard jab and cross will be used to damage, while the following hook will be a throwaway used to get into a better position. On and on, Kazaki simply overloaded his competitors with too much input. His tight but looping hooks allowed him to quickly double up on the same side like Tyson. But he usually wasn't going for power, so he did this in the exact opposite way as Iron Mike. Whereas Tyson would reload between punches by resetting his hips for maximum power, like recocking a gun. Kozaki would simply continue to circle for the first hook had taken to the loop right into the next. This tactic was built for overwhelming speed, and he could cheat a little more power by sidestepping as he punched. Kozaki had a thousand variations, but they would all keep him one step ahead of his opponents so that he will always chain into more punches. And this way, his offense became his defense. And the exact opposite was true as well. Kazaki's defense was also his offense. And back to David to explain all about that. His footwork was just as fluid and complex as his punches, allowing him to make constant, minute adjustments to regulate distance. Distance is one of the core foundations when it comes to defense. Kalzagi's preferred distance was mid-range which is pretty dangerous, but makes a lot of sense. It's nearly impossible to fight at such a high volume from the outside, and fighting too close can oftentimes smother a boxer's punches. So mid-range, it was. This way, by taking one small step back, Kalzagi was able to evade punches. One small step in, and he was able to engage. One slide left, or right, and he could create a new angle to capitalize on openings. The key to fighting at high volume is utilizing energy efficiently. So Kalzagi would move just enough to give himself the time and distance he needed to counter. Sure, when he really wanted to land hard shots, he could plant his feet down. But he understood the advantages of moving his feet with his punches, sliding left or right during combinations, and playing with the odd angles that are inherent to southpaws. And speaking of angles, let's finish up by looking at Kalzagi's unbelievable head movement. To throw at such an astronomically high volume, Kalzagi's hands couldn't be glued to his head the whole time. So, he often fought with the low guard, which kept a clear line of vision and enabled him to react quickly if he wanted to land counters. With his arms already extended for counterbalance, it took little effort to use his head movement to power wide, looping hooks. This way, he could use his transitions between head slots to set up hard shots.
it should be clear that Kalzagi was an underrated master of ringcraft. But this shouldn't be too surprising, because after all, it's easy to lead the dance if you're the one who wrote the music. I've linked Surgical Boxing's channel below. Everyone should check it out, he does great work. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.